While I know the MOSFET power board has a bit of nonlinearity at low current, driving them with a DC voltage seems to work quite well for a given constant current. But I want the DC load to be able to respond to voltage changes with some speed. I'm hoping to get the response time to under one millisecond. I don't think I'm shooting for too much here. So I thought it might be a good idea to take a look at the frequency response of the power MOSFET boards. Now a frequency generator with adjustable DC offset and amplitude would be perfect for this. But I don't have one. What I do have is the control board that is going to drive the MOSFET power boards. So I think I can turn it into a makeshift frequency generator. Won't be as convenient, but I think it can tell me something about the AC response of my MOSFET power boards. First thing I need is waveform data to send to the DAC on the microcontroller. So I made a sine wave table that goes from 0 to 1. I've tried 48, 64, and 256 entries. 256 looks great, but really cuts down on the maximum frequency I can output. At 48, that's only 12 points for each quadrant in the sine wave. The steps are pretty noticeable at that number of entries. 64 seems to be a good balance, so I'm going to go with that. The 0 to 1 gets scaled to the amplitude I want for the waveform. And then the DC bias is added. Then this data is copied to a C array in the secondary core project. The array data will be used by a timer interrupt routine to feed the DAC. This is the inconvenient part. If I want to raise or lower the amplitude of the waveform or change the DC bias, it's back to the spreadsheet, copy the data, reprogram the chip. But it seems to work okay. One convenience I do have is I can change the frequency from the front panel knob. Turns out it's not too hard to exchange data between the primary and secondary cores. So it's time to test. To protect my power supply from me doing something careless, I made this nichrome resistor. It's a bit over one ohm. Should keep me from blowing a fuse in the power supply if I turn on the MOSFET completely. I'm taking my current waveforms with this circuit. The INA181A3 has a gain of 100 and it is across a 1 milliohm current shunt. It seems to have a pretty good frequency response. The data sheet shows it only down a couple of dB at 100 kilohertz. This is supposed to be a 1 to 6 amp sine wave at around 1 kilohertz. The noise and ringing in it are horrendous. Down around the 1 amp level of the waveform, definitely some odd behavior. Here at 4 kilohertz, it's hard to even tell it's being driven by a sine wave. I was more than a little disappointed at this point. My sine wave driving the MOSFET power board is a pretty good sine wave, except for the bit of fan noise that's being coupled back into the power supply. Seems to be hard to isolate fan noise when the fans are 80 plus percent of the load. I'm thinking there is going to have to be a power supply number two for this thing. But for the tiny bit of noise on the sine wave to turn into such swings of current, I think that has to be a feedback problem. I didn't have any filtering in the circuit from the output of the DAC to the gate of the MOSFET, or at least I didn't think I did. I noticed I had a couple of capacitors in the feedback circuit. When I had everything apart and wires run everywhere, I had put them in to suppress some oscillations I was having, and hadn't thought about them since. I had 120 picofarad capacitors in both C2 and C5, so that would cut down on the feedback frequency response. Here is the current waveform with the 220 picofarads in place. Here is the current waveform with them removed. Much better. Still have a bit of ringing and noise. I did make space for some RC filters on the board. The thing is, everything after pin 3 of U1 is going to be compared to the current feedback. I am curious as to what a 10 kHz filter will do in the circuit. With the hot air station, I don't mind swapping out SMD parts at all now, so I'm going to give it a try since I have the MOSFET module pulled out. So R8 will get replaced with a 4.7K ohm resistor, and C4 will get a 3.3 nanofarad capacitor, R9 will get a zero ohm jumper, around a 10 kHz RC low pass filter and I'm not really sure what to expect. 
First, I'm pretty sure most of the high frequency noise in the waveform is from the ground loop of the scope probe. Well, that and fan electrical noise. The waveform itself looks pretty good, ignoring the noise. I'll sweep it up and see what I get. The waveform amplitude is pretty even up to about 8 kHz. So the current starts to increase in amplitude right where the 10 kHz filter really starts to kick in. That's fascinating. And once I get to 12 kHz, the waveform starts to distort. By 14 kHz, the distortion is really getting bad. At 20 kHz, the current flow is hitting 0 at one extreme and near 11 amps at the other. Then at around 25 kHz, the amplitude starts to drop. And by 30 kHz, it's starting to look like a sine wave again. Even at 48 kHz, the signal is still getting through. I wasn't sure what to expect, but that result did surprise me. I'm coming away from this test with the conclusion, don't put any filtering inside the MOSFET drive loop. Here is a frequency sweep with no filtering. It does look like the amplitude increases a bit around 8 to 10 kilohertz. Definitely by 12 kilohertz, amplitude is up a bit. So I'll say from 10 kHz up, amplitude increases, but waveform stays a sine wave all the way through. I've just got to fix my noise problem. I said that last sweep was with no filtering, but that's not quite accurate. The gate capacitance on this MOSFET is huge, something like 20 nanofarad. That with the 150 ohm R18, plus the output impedance of U2, will be a bit of a low pass filter. So I guess I would need a high pass filter somewhere in the loop to compensate for that. I didn't include part locations for that. The gain of the MOSFET power module starts increasing around 10 kHz and keeps increasing at least till 50 kHz and I suspect the gain keeps rising far beyond 50 kHz. So I've got to keep noise from getting into the MOSFET modules. Also I'll have to control how fast I update the drive signal to them. A large fast input swing is going to overshoot. But I'm one step closer. Thank you for watching.